people just talking about the fact that they didn't have lights all night and it just doesn't seem that things are getting any better. Well, the, the bad news is I don't think it is going to get any better. In fact, um, this is a, a temporary measure that ESCOM have got in place to alleviate the uh, power pressure that they find themselves under and uh, uh, we should in the next couple of days unfortunately be thrown into darkness again. But this, I think, we need to again speak to ESCOM. Perhaps we can get uh, Andrew Etzinger on the phone again. Yesterday he gave us some information about, uh, you know, not uh, having load shedding. But now let's just find out what is going to be in store for us today. It seems like we have to update on a daily basis in this time. Now, in the light of these power outages experienced over the weekend as a result of the Majuba power station collapse and the new load shedding schedule, different sectors of the economy find themselves looking for ways to soften the impact. Sandak Lewin Property Trust has penned a suggestion list on how the property sector specifically can respond to these outages. They encourage property managers or body corporates of residential developments to plan around these schedules. So for more on this, uh, in our Cape Town studios, we're joined by property expert Carl Smith. Carl, it's good to have you on the program. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you, Leah, and morning to you too and your viewers. Thank you. Now, almost all aspects of property development from construction to operation depend on energy. How are these outages um, affecting the development of property? Well, I think uh, specifically in residential developments, there's the issue of safety and security. A lot of the security aspects or access control aspects of property are very dependent on electricity. And without power, all these measures that have been put in place are now null and void. Therefore, uh, properties are at risk in terms of trespassers gaining easy access. And then, of course, in terms of safety, um, most properties over three stories have got lifts. Yeah. And these obviously have problems uh, in that you have people stuck in lifts if there are no contingencies in place to deal with that. Yeah. So these are things, what you're saying is we, we need to think ahead um, of these eventualities. Definitely. There has to be some good planning on the part of the residential complexes. They need to be aware that they need battery backup systems or any kind of backup system to ensure that the systems that they have got in place when there is power are fully functional. All right. Now, you, you say that you're encouraged by the availability of the load shedding schedule. I, obviously, this can help the body corporates plan ahead and, and um, I suppose, um, mitigate the impact of the challenges. But, you know, what, what should we be doing? How should we be planning ahead? Well, I think the, the most critical is that they're engaging with the residents of their properties, ensuring they're aware of what needs to be done in the, in the time of a power outage. Um, maybe even where there is access to security, there are plans put in place that the security have measures to ensure that they're not at risk, that uh, lifts are checked, uh, that there's signage up at lifts to make sure people are not using the lifts during power outages. Um, but it's very difficult. Not every building has security. Not every building has access to means to be able to deal with these power outages. And therefore, it becomes critical, as I've said before, that owners are engaged and assist with dealing with these matters. Yeah, besides that, I mean, I, you know, just out the corner of my eye, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the overlay that we are playing now. And obviously, one of the first things that people do is as soon as the lights go out, they light some candles. Um, and that in itself can offer and pose a huge danger for a lot of residences, a lot of businesses as well. Yes, definitely. Uh, people fall asleep with candles still burning. That is a fire risk in itself. Um, and also with the, not everybody does that there, and people are also having to walk across areas that are dark at night, which poses further risk to injury uh, to them and also to uh, allow trespassers to uh, be able to sneak around without them realizing that they're there. Yeah. This load shedding schedule that we've all been given and, uh, and we saw the outcry yesterday because the load shedding schedule was put in place. Then we were told that the load shedding was not going ahead and yet there were power outages but this was, called by, this was caused by a fault at another um, power station. So you can't even rely on the load shedding schedule unfortunately and that's what I'm gathering from a lot of people. So these contingency plans you're talking about, they need to be available all the time obviously. Definitely during these times, uh, there's talk that the, towards the end of this week there's going to be further 
potential load shedding. Um, and that over the next few months, this is going to be a standard matter for all residents and also all businesses to deal with. Um, some properties have got backup generators that can actually deal with the matter, and so it's a lot easier for them. But not all of the properties have those means or finances to actually uh, install a backup generator or even the facility on site to uh, host such a, a huge um, item. Yeah. Let's get back to the security issue, because I think that that is of major concern to South Africans. Uh, whether we like it or not, we do live in a very dangerous country, and many people um, equip their homes with all sorts of fancy security. Uh, however, when the electricity goes out, so does the security system. Yeah, what backup plans can we put in place for that? I know that you aren't the security expert, but this is, you know, this is another challenge for protecting our properties and our lives. Well, unfortunately, you have to revert back to old, tried and tested, which is burglar bars and security gates. And some places they start looking terrible and people don't uh, advocate that. But it is unfortunately one of the only ones that doesn't rely on security. Um, oh, sorry, should I say electricity? Yeah. So you're going to actually end up having to have more of that physical barrier that's in place and people becoming more vigilant in terms of who's on site, who's walking around and reporting it to either the, the SAPS or to maybe their armed response that uh, is part of the infrastructure of their property. Yeah. All right, um, Carl Schmidt, thank you very much for talking to us here on the program. I think just giving us a bit of food for thought in terms of uh, planning ahead as much as you possibly can because uh, we have an electricity problem. It's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Uh, in fact, you've got ESCOM warning us that this is, uh, this is as bad, if not worse, than what we saw in 2008. And right now, uh, they're doing everything they can by transporting uh, the coal by trucks to this, uh, this particular um, the silo that has collapsed. But this is just a two or three day measure that they've put in place. What happens thereafter? Well, then we've got a big, big problem. So there you go. Just, uh, just uh, remember this contact number. Remember the, um, the website address. That's, of course, if you have electricity so that you can actually get right. onto, onto the internet. Oh, goodness, it's, it's a catch-22. What can I tell you? Carl Smith was in our Cape Town studio. He's a property expert talking to us here on Morning Live.